शेयरिंग करो तो स्क्रीन ऑप्शन हेलो डॉक्टर विघ्नेश गुड मॉर्निंग कैन यू हेयर मी या ओके गुड मॉर्निंग डॉक्टर मिलन गुड मॉर्निंग सर गुड मॉर्निंग सर हाउ आर यू हाउ आर यू सर आई एम डूइंग फाइन सर हाउ आर यू इट्स नाइस टू सी यू अगेन सर या या सो माय सो माय ओके गुड सो वेरी नाइस द इनिशिएटिव दैट दिस यू हैव स्टार्टेड एवरी 15 डेज इट्स अ गुड थिंग टू या refresh uh, the topics correct o- overall it's a good learning experience for all of us uh, yes sir uh, the department faculties the postgraduate students myself so yes, it's sir. a pretty uh, uh, as, as we go more into the sessions it's becoming more and more interesting because the topics are very diverse yes sir and uh, it's useful for uh, practitioners as well right and yes sir also, yes sir yeah. Uh, so that way we could uh, bring all the uh, interesting cases into uh, use it for a larger learning experience exactly sir yeah. that's great yes sir good it is helpful for the post graduates also and uh, for yeah. clinic clinical clinicians also so for both of them it is uh, helpful yeah actually some of these topics uh, i feel we have never uh, discussed or uh, Taught over these years as a as a, a session or as a series of cases and things like that. Yes, so, sir. Uh, that way, uh, it's become a phenomenal experience overall for us as well. Right, right. It's a it's a learning experience for everyone uh, at the end. These things. Right. Yeah. Uh, so, Doc Vinesh, we we can uh, all set. I'll just uh, take a minute, and then we will. Uh, you can introduce, and we'll go on. Is it okay? No, we are not able to hear you, uh, Vignesh. Uh, Doctor Milan, can you hear Vignesh? Yes. Uh, no, no, sir. I am not able to hear Doctor Vignesh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think uh, you must not have on the audio. I think. Ignace, your voice is not uh, heard. So now we are audible. Yeah, we could hear again. Uh, there was a echo though, but uh, we could hear now. Okay. Uh. so uh, can i uh, can i start with nish no we are we are not able to hear you ne sabhi ko chalo Sir, yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Uh, now you are audible. Yes, yeah. Okay. okay. So, good morning, everyone. And uh, at the outset, my thanks to Dr. Milan uh, for uh, sharing his experience and his time in this uh, chat with uh, Champion Buddy series. I um, reiterate many times uh, the case is being discussed in the group in the Champion Buddies group, uh, Pedo Buddies group. um uh, even till date uh, some of the uh, pictures or cases we discussed are very very interesting in the learning experience so uh, the basic idea of this uh, session is to widen the learning and of course to give a perspective to my postgraduate students as well and as well as the faculty so dr Mil- and i heard i've been interacting with dr milan for this uh, before covid we used to meet in the conferences and we have uh, brief uh, interactions uh, or during and on and off the lectures and various uh, platforms 
and uh, so I've been also following the work he's doing and uh, social media of uh, the case being shared. Pretty impressive uh, clinical work. So thank you, Dr. Millen, for sharing the time and uh, experience. Thanks a lot, sir. Thanks a lot, sir. Yeah, I'll, I'll pass it on to Dr. Vignesh and uh, he will introduce and we will move on. Yes, Vignesh. Dr. Vignesh, can you introduce uh, Dr. Millen? No, we are not able to hear you, Dr. Vignesh. Just one moment, probably he will. Uh... Yes, sir. <clears throat> so now it's audible, sir. Yes, yes, Dr. English. Please go ahead. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, sir be before introducing our speaker on today's topic, I just want to uh, share my screen for the general guidelines for the participants. So, so that uh, to avoid distractions in between the lectures, in case uh, you want to tell a few instructions uh, for them. Uh, just a single slide uh, guidelines about uh, the lecture series, it's purely for the participants. Please dedicate this 45 minutes of committed time for each lecture session and sit in a quiet space and avoid public environments and external distractions and interruptions. And put your phone on a silent mode or switch off the camera in Gmail to avoid distraction of the speaker and uh, discuss with your other colleagues and update yourself in case if you missed out the session and take notes uh, during the session if you want and please email us all the queries uh, so that it will be answered before the next session no in between discussion session in between the sessions will take place and uh, kindly fill the feedback forms at the end of the session which will be posted in the chat box by me so Yes, sir. Uh, so, hope you all know about what is today's topic is on. So, today's topic is on journey of two tooth birds from missing to appearing uh, wonders of pulpectomy. So, I had posted the invitation priorly yesterday itself in the uh, pedo buddies group and other uh, groups. Uh, so, basically, First, I'll introduce about the speaker first, uh, Dr. Milan Chasser. A few lines about Milan Chasser. So, sir has completed his master's degree uh, from VS Dental College and Hospital, Bangalore in 2014 and completed his undergraduation from uh, Mahatma Gandhi Mission Dental College and Hospital from Bombay. And uh, he has received various best scientific papers, awards, and best peer of the year award from Excellence in Dentistry. And he has been a guest speaker in various forums like uh, 39th ISPPD. And he has conducted a pre conference workshop in uh, ISPP Convention Jaipur 2020. And he's, uh, to his credit, he has al also authored a chapter in the textbook of PDI Dentistry by Nikhil Marwasar on the topic of general anesthesia. Uh, and he also regularly conducts a comprehensive clinical periodontics courses all over India. So today's topic, what he's going to talk about, because all we are doing a pulpectomy in different scenarios using hand files and rotary files. But apart from this, uh, the most important fact is what we have to concentrate is on. Uh, from my uh, thinking, it's most on what is the best irrigant to be used, and if any gauze needles to be used, uh, any new advancements to be incorporated, and also intra-canal medicaments to be used in the pulpectomy. So it can be uh, taken as a uh, or choose as a treatment of choice for the pulpectomy. So this presentation would be basically focused on a case of bilaterally missing second premolars and their appearance in the follow-up visits after performing pulpectomy. So over to you, sir. Uh, thank you, sir. Yeah. Present now. Present now. You can present now, sir.
Yeah, yeah. And uh, yes, thank you. Hide got it. Is the presentation visible, Dr. Vinish? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The slide is shown on the slide show. Uh, yes. uh, uh, thanks a lot. Uh, uh, a very good morning to uh, each and everyone. So today, uh, th this is a short uh, presentation uh, that that I am going to uh, discuss about. Uh, this is a journey of two uh, tooth buds uh, that that were initially uh, seem to be congenitally missing uh, to me. But uh, later on, it started uh, appearing. So, so basically, it it, it 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 will sound like a routine case of a perfect tummy, but the clinical scenario is slightly uh, different. And uh, this it, it this is a kind of a scenario which is not very uh, uncommon uh, nowadays. It is just that we we, we have to uh, make a clinical decision that we have to obturate such cases with which uh, material and uh, how the follow up may uh, look like. So let's begin with uh, uh, the presentation. So before before going to the clinical part of it, we, we just have a small introduction regarding uh, what is the normal age of calcification of second uh, premolars, which I'm sure everybody uh, would be uh, aware about, and and what, what could be the variations that can uh, happen in in this uh, aspect. So the terms congenitally missing uh, absence and uh, developmental hyperdontia and tooth agenesis are all used to uh, describe the failure of uh, between one to five uh, permanent tooth germ to form. So uh, uh, more than five uh, teeth, if, if it is missing, then it, it's termed as uh, oligodontia. But with the exception of third molars, as we all know, the most commonly uh, frequently observed missing teeth are uh, mandibular second uh, premolars and uh, maxillary lateral uh, incisors. Uh, however, one outstanding question always uh, remains. When should the, the final diagnosis of uh, congenitally missing uh, uh, to be uh, made so th th this is one uh, qu question which which can uh, de de determine our treatment uh, protocol and which observation material we, we can use uh, to give the best to our uh, pedo patients odontogenesis of second premolars has been reported to show greater variability as compared to other uh, permanent uh, teeth so that the literature says that uh, in terms of the normal uh, cal calcification what we generally observe is According to uh, Maurice et al, it has shown that the calcification of second premolars uh, takes place between the age of 2 to 2.5 years of age, that, that, as we all know. And uh, even NOLA has reported that, that the, the crypt of mandibular second premolar generally appears at the age of uh, 3 years. So even if we consider a, a normal uh, range, it is between 2 to 3 years that we should be able to uh, see an appearance of second premolar whenever we uh, take an uh, IOP or OPG of a child at this uh, age group so between 2 to 3 years is what is there in our mind which is a normal uh, which is a normal age group of uh, a second premolar to uh, appear but however the calcification of mandibular second premolar at approximately 5 to 6 years of age has also been uh, reported generally we, we, do, we do not pay, uh, pay pay attention or we have not uh, uh, maybe uh, you know thought about this aspect of uh, uh, do, doing a uh, whenever we see a missing uh, second premolar but but it is just to uh, you know, keep in mind that the, the even mandibular second premolars uh, appear at five to six years of age which is again uh, a normal thing second premolar uh, agenesis can usually be confirmed only when the patient is around eight to nine years of age so if you see a OPG of a patient around eight to nine years of age and at that time if, if there is uh, no appearance of uh, second premolar then maybe we could uh, uh, decide that yes this is a congenitally missing uh, uh, the, uh, primo, second premolar and our line of action uh, could be different at that uh, point of time. A very less uh, frequent situation is called as an apparent uh, hypodontia due to a delayed uh, tooth development, a very uh, very rare uh, thing but could be uh, present so it, it could lead to a possible misdiagnosis as uh, con congenital absence of uh, tooth. We may think that the, the, the tooth is uh, you know it's a congenitally missing tooth and our line of treatment would go in that direction but maybe after some uh, months or uh, after a couple of years we, we, we could be uh, able to see the premolar uh, developing so uh, so just now now we'll begin the clinical uh, aspect and uh, this, uh, this is a case report uh, of a child who had uh, you know he was five and a half year old uh, when he reported to our uh, clinic uh, with a chief complaint of uh, pain and there was a huge swelling with uh, with his uh, uh, lower right uh, you know second premolar tooth number eight five 
So intraoral examination uh, revealed that there was a grossly decayed uh, mandibular second uh, primary molar uh, associated with uh, mobility because he had a huge uh, abscess and there was uh, swelling as well. So, uh, uh, so it was obvious that uh, th th there was mobility. And uh, again, uh, this was the X-ray of the this was, this is the X-ray of the child. As you can clearly see, uh, it shows a huge uh, furcation radiolucency. And uh, in this uh, X-ray, again, it is uh, visible that the second premolar uh, uh, tooth germ has not yet uh, formed. And, and if you can see the, the tooth bud of first uh, premolar, it is uh, visible and, and uh, it is well advanced. So at this age, around five and a half year, uh, years of age, so that there was one thing in our mind that uh, this could be a case of congenitally missing uh, second premolar because already the child is five and a half years of age and there is no signs of uh, permanent tooth bud. So in the X-ray, we, we just have to, uh, uh, we, we are noticing that there is a huge uh, furcation radiolucency. Even periapically, we could see that uh, some amount of uh, pathologic resorption has already uh, been uh, started. And uh, it is very common uh, that the pulpal fold would be very thin in uh, such cases when, when there is a huge furcation uh, radiolucency. So again, this is one point which we have to keep in uh, mind. So how, how I went about the, 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 the treatment? Looking at the X-ray, one would uh, one would feel that uh, extraction of such a tooth with a huge uh, abscess followed by space maintainer is a very predictable uh, uh, could be a very predictable outcome, which which I uh, definitely agree, and uh, you know it could be one of one of the treatment uh, protocol. But uh, the but what I uh, 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 followed in this case and uh, went about was that we did a two visit uh, pulpectomy. We discussed all the options with the the parents at that time. And uh, whatever best we could do for the child, we have, we, we, we tried to do our best. So we did a, a multi-visit uh, pulpectomy, like how we generally follow whenever we see, uh, we have a patient with a with a huge swelling and uh, slight mobility. So after that, we had placed a preformed uh, zirconia crown and kept this case under regular uh, follow-up. What we used in this uh, case, we obturated with uh, calcium hydroxide plus iodoform uh, combination of a material. So, uh, in short, I would just discuss the treatment protocol, what we uh, uh, generally follow at our practice uh, whenever we have such uh, similar cases with, uh, with, with, with huge furcation uh, radiolucency. Uh, the, the tooth may be present, a premolar tooth bud or uh, missing, but, but the protocol is generally uh, more or less the similar whenever we, we see such cases with uh, furcation radiolucency. So uh, after the proper access opening, uh, just coming coming to the working length for such cases or for routine uh, cases as well, uh, I do not uh, you know, place a file inside the, uh, uh, the, the, the molar and then uh, take the X-ray. A very simple way of uh, the, or determining the working length as mentioned in uh, Kennedy's Operative Dentistry book is that just a visual comparison of the file and the root canal length on the preoperative periapical radiograph is also going to result in a sufficient uh, clinical accuracy. So this is what generally I uh, uh, follow. Apart from that, even electronic, uh, so, so this is just one, one uh, you know, uh, slide to show how uh, in the preoperative uh, x-ray, we, we just, uh, um, uh, with the different uh, editing tools that uh, we have in the RBG, I just, uh, you know, uh, take an approximate working length of uh, the tooth that we are going to start pulpectomy with. <coughs> Apart from uh, this, Electronic apex locators have also been uh, sh shown to have uh, uh, acceptable level of accuracy in the measurement of uh, root canal length in uh, primordity. So these two are generally the ways of determining working length for uh, whenever I'm doing a pulpectomy in a, in a, in a primary teeth. So this is a very good uh, meta-analysis which, which has been uh, uh, published. And it says that uh, apex locator with uh, you know a th third generation or above that uh, is going to give you a su sufficient uh, level of accuracy. These are just few small tips uh, determining the working length. So yes, we have determined the working length uh, looking at the preoperative X-ray, but it is always uh, better to subtract uh, one to one point five millimeter from whatever uh, uh, length we have uh, got on the apex locator or on the uh, on the preoperative radiograph, since we all know that primary tooth has got a dynamically uh, shifting apex uh, related to time that could be physiologic or pathologic resorption that 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 would have taken place not clearly visible on the preoperative x-ray so inadvertently we could uh, uh, do over instrumentation uh, again and again because we have determined a working length <coughs> which may be uh, which is going uh, beyond the apex 
so what 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 could that uh, lead to it can lead to a foreign body reaction which is going to lead to accelerated uh, uh, root resorption how that takes place once there is a foreign body reaction uh, the, the the odontoclast and uh, the it's going to cause resorption of the obturator material which has gone beyond the apex plus it is going to cause the obturation of the same material within the canal also and uh, at the end it is also going to lead to accelerated uh, root resorption so so just to avoid the uh, over instrumentation it is always uh, better to uh, to limit our working length to just 1 or 2 mm short of the radiographic uh, apex so that we do not uh, uh, breach the 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 <coughs> the apex and uh, we do not do any over uh, instrumentation uh regarding uh, the the irrigation and the protocol generally that we follow for all the uh, the cases not specifically this uh, case is that sodium hypochlorite 2.5% uh, is what uh, uh, generally i use and which is generally uh, recommended but uh, but, but but never we we have to forcefully uh, uh, inject sodium hypochlorite with in, inside the canal because it may uh, diffuse into the periapical uh, region which could lead to post operative uh, treatment complication saline is being used uh, intermittently and towards the end uh, we prefer to use a 17% uh, edta uh, or 2% uh, chlorhexidine uh, irrigation just before uh, obturating now specifically talking about this case or similar cases whenever there is a uh, there is a swelling and uh, furcation radiolucency we have to place an intracanal uh, uh, medicament so there are a lot of intracanal medicaments uh, which are uh, available with uh, variable uh, success rates what generally i use and uh, i have got a good success is with with using uh, medicaments based uh, intracanal medicament based with on uh, calcium hydroxide even triple antibiotic paste has been uh, recommended in the literature apart from that other, other intracanal medicaments have also been uh, reported with good uh, success rate but what but what has worked for me over a period of uh, last 7 years is uh, using uh, uh, intracanal medicaments based on based on uh, calcium hydroxide so we could so for this case after uh, we have done the biomechanical uh, preparation uh, we, we paste intracanal medicament for uh, a period of 2 weeks in uh, this particular case since there was a huge uh, fulcation and a per periapical uh, uh, radiolucency so it was uh, necessary to recall the patient after uh, two weeks uh, uh, just just to uh, you know uh, see see that the, that the swelling has uh, reduced and the mobility had also uh, reduced at that point of time so in during the next visit of the child uh, we just uh, irrigated and flushed with uh, saline to remove whatever intracanal medicament that we had uh, placed and then we obturated with uh, uh, a calcium hydroxide plus iodoform based uh, material that is uh, uh, metapex Uh, 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 a a very simple way of obturating with uh, metapex which i'm sure uh, we all uh, follow the same uh, technique is we just in insert the tip of metapex till it gets engaged inside the canal and we have to uh, slowly disengage uh, it from the canal by pulling back slightly and in the process we we start injecting the the material as we are uh, withdrawing from the canal Uh, the tip uh, will not reach the apex uh, because the tip is slightly uh, wide so it, maybe it, the tip goes till half length of the canal but but that is uh, more than sufficient to get a good uh, obturation but what is one thing is that we always uh, have to leave a very little amount of excess uh, metapex above the orifice uh, so that that the, the that, that is the material you know when we press it with the Uh, with a moist cotton the, the, and we have to push that uh, thing inside the canal so the the pressure with which we uh, push the excess is important then the entire material is going to reach till the apex and you could see a uh, radiographically a very nice uh, obturation so always leave, leave a little above the orifice and then uh, apply pressure <coughs> now specifically talking about uh, the, this case uh, because as you can clearly see there is a huge furcation uh, radiolucency we all know that uh, furcal healing is always a challenge in, uh, in in a primary molar and and very commonly we get cases uh, which uh, come with uh, these kind of uh, swelling that there could be a gingival uh, swelling there could be an extra oral swelling so what what is the peculiarity and why these kind of furcal abscess commonly take place in uh, in a primary uh, molar is because as we all know that uh, primary molar have got a very thin uh, pulpal floor there is high prevalence of accessory canals in that uh, 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 particular anatomical part which is the reason why the uh, for furcation radiolucency and furcal abscess is very uh, common and also that they have got wider uh, dentinal tubes all this uh, result in a increase uh, permeability and the pulpal and the periodontal uh, communication is what uh, 
takes place and which which is a reason uh, which could lead to even failure in certain uh, cases in all the cases we might not get an absolutely uh, good uh, healing so so the most important thing is to prevent the communication between the pulpal and the the, the periodontal region because any amount of leakage that is going to happen between uh, the, the, this particular uh, uh, area the, this uh, where there is a thin uh, pulpal floor is going to be a reason for uh, failure in uh, future in such cases so it is very important to preserve that uh, particular uh, thin pulpal floor uh, region to prevent any leakage of uh, our uh, Uh, the contents which could lead to a direct communication between the pulpal and the periodontal uh, floor so 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 what one uh, additional step uh, after uh, obturating with uh, metapex that uh, that we follow and uh, i could also find a literature for that uh, particular thing is that uh, i generally place a layer of zinc oxide uh, eugenol or a hard setting uh, material over the metapex or vitapex any calcium hydroxide plus iodoform combination that we are uh, using so just a 2 mm or 3 mm thin layer of uh, zinc oxide eugenol is what uh, uh, i place over that uh, i will restore it with the help of a glass ionomer cement followed by a stainless steel crown so what this uh, is going to do is it's going to uh, play, play, uh, give give you a very nice uh, coronal seal uh, because the the sealing uh, capacity of uh, the sealing ability of zinc oxide eugenol is also uh, good enough and it's going to prevent any uh, leakage and any further communication it is going to uh, strengthen the thin pulpal uh, floor as well so uh, a very nice article that i could uh, find so basically this article had compared two uh, base materials uh, one was uh, irm uh, which is uh, uh, which is again a, a, a kind of a, a reinforced zinc oxide uh, eugenol and they had compared that material with uh, mta in similar situations right so they had around Uh, around maybe they they have uh, they have, they, they have uh, in in the study it, there were around 50 uh, cases with uh, um, furcation uh, radio lucencies uh, similar kind of cases where they they have obturated with uh, calcium hydroxide plus iodoform based uh, material and uh, with the same uh, concept that such cases have got a very thin pulpal floor and uh, there, there could be leakage and you know communication between the pulpal and the periodontal uh, region which could lead to re uh, infection because there are a lot of accessory uh, canals and uh, it could be difficult sometimes to clean uh, uh, each and every uh, uh, accessory canals so they have just compared these two materials and they they got uh, uh, and in this study they 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 could find that mta is a slightly better uh, uh, a base material which which could lead to a faster uh, healing in uh, such cases but there was no statistically uh, significant uh, difference between uh, the irm which is a reinforced zinc oxide eugenol and uh, mta so so just looking at the study we could uh, uh, conclude that uh, even zinc oxide eugenol can be a, a very good base material for uh, uh, such kind of cases when there is uh, furcation and it has given uh, me a good uh, success so in all my similar cases we, i always uh, place one layer of uh, zinc oxide eugenol so this study basically have uh, shown that if we are using mta as a base material the, uh, uh, see healing is going to happen with both the cases but the only difference was that uh, if they are placing mta as a base material the healing was slightly faster as compared to uh, when when they have used a uh, uh, zinc oxide eugenol as a base material and uh, there were just if you compare the difference there were just two more failures with uh, zinc oxide eugenol so overall both the materials uh, as per this study were equally uh, good with no statistical uh, difference and uh, again uh, uh, one more important question will be there in our uh, mind that if if the tooth is congenitally missing uh, for, for for a patient so and so if the age is maybe 5 years or 5 and a half year old in such cases if you see a patient with around maybe a 7 year old 8 year old old child with uh, a similar kind of a lesion with with uh, uh, with no presence of a pri- uh, second permanent uh, premolar so w- what decision we have to uh, take like what we could take is that why, why we don't uh, don't obturate uh, with uh, gutta percha or uh, mta in uh, such cases see there are many uh, uh, case reports which, uh, which which you know i am going to show towards the end of the presentation that the premolar tooth bud have erupted even after the age of 9 years or uh, 10, 10 years as well so it is always uh, Uh, safer uh, 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 according to see i am going to discuss about the disadvantages of uh, gutta percha and mta as well when we obturate but the ideal scenario uh, as per, according to me is that if there is a child maybe who is around 12 years or 14 years of age uh, wherein there is a over retained uh, second primary molar and you don't see a uh, 
permanent premolar which is erupting that could be a, a, a situation wherein you can think of obturating with a with a gutta percha or a mta because you are very much sure that now there is no possibility of the second premolar to erupt at that particular age but what patients generally we uh, uh, as a pediatric dentist uh, uh, have in our operatory majority of the patient with the age group of 4 5 or 6 years of age with this particular situation it is always safer to obturate with uh, uh, either a calcium hydroxide iodoform combination zinc oxide or uh, endoflas uh, as compared to uh, obturating it with a with a gutta percha what what hap- what may happen if we obturate with uh, gutta percha we never know how the primary tooth is going to uh, behave in uh, future it could be a very unpredictable uh, uh, situation what if the permanent tooth bud is going to uh, erupt at that point of time then it's going to be difficult to uh, uh, to remove the gutta percha and uh, what if we, we we have already obturated it with a with a mta and uh, you know if the if if there is no uh, lesion healing or you know if we have to do a retreatment in uh, such cases again it is very uh, difficult to do a retreatment when uh, you have placed a uh, mta of course mta is a very good uh, material and it is not going to fail but i'm just talking about the age group uh, of uh, the patient that that so 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 so, uh, so the the most important criteria is that uh, what is the age of the child when they have reported uh, to you so i feel that <clears throat> once the patient has crossed uh, uh, probably uh, 12 years or you know 14 years of age then that it is the time that you can think of obturating with uh, <clears throat> gutta percha or uh, mda not a very young child uh, at the age group of you know 4 uh, 5 or 6 uh, uh, years of age because uh, mind you even uh, if it is a congen- if, even if the uh, second premolar is going to be congenitally missing there is always uh, uh, don't think that the the primary molar is not going to uh, resolve even in future there is always a possibility of the primary tooth getting uh, resolved it can resolve uh, at uh, any uh, uh, age because uh, you you never know the depending upon the occlusal uh, forces whether the periodontal uh, uh, structure of that particular the second primary molar is being able to withstand the occlusal forces or no at that uh, age group so the, all these are the different factors which will determine the resorption of uh, these over retained uh, uh, molars at that age let's say 15 years or 20 years of uh, age so one uh, case report which i uh, could uh, uh, find and just wanted to discuss is that this was a, a, a tooth with a, a seemingly congenitally missing uh, second primary molar the age of the patient was around uh, maybe 4 or 5 years old and they have uh, started the case but as you can see in the follow up x ray just after 6 months you see the entire uh, the, the root has resolved and you can see <coughs> the uh, the gutta percha lying uh, that way so again uh, there could be various uh, uh, reasons so all just i wanted to say is that it is always better to uh, obturate with uh, uh, calcium hydroxide iodoform based uh, materials when the age group of the child is uh, as low as 5 uh, or 6 years of uh, age as compared to obturating with uh, gutta percha and uh, mta <clears throat> now coming back to my uh, case so as i have already uh, shown you the pre operative uh, x ray so this was the pre operative x ray with the focal radio lucency with uh, periapical radio lucency and uh, uh, no uh, there was no presence of second uh, premolar so the treatment protocol also has been uh, discussed we have done a two visit uh, pulpectomy for this uh, particular case and i have obturated with uh, metapex this is the immediate uh, post operative uh, x ray of my case and this is a one year follow up of uh, the case wherein you can see there is a complete uh, healing of the furcal and the periapical uh, uh, radio lucency the child is now 6 and 1/2 years of uh, age with a clearly visible uh, premolar tooth but which was not visible when he was 5 uh, and 1/2 years old so uh, as you can see that uh, the the healing is also been uh, done and the premolar tooth is also uh, visible now the child this is a one and a half year old uh, follow up as you can see what what changes uh, uh, we are we are able to see is that the first and foremost is the the premolar tooth bud is uh, growing very nicely the lesion is uh, healed and it continues to remain uh, uh, that way even after one and a half years the only difference which we are able to see which is a which is a common thing is that the the, the material that we have used for obturation uh, which is uh, metapex is is started to get, get, get more and more uh, we are seeing the resorption of that material so first the as a immediate post operative x ray you could see that the material was gone beyond the apex uh, that material has been resorbed after one year and after in one and a half year uh, follow up x ray you can see even intraradicularly the material uh, has uh, started to resorb which, which which i consider it as a normal uh, thing whenever we are using these kind of uh, uh, 
material right so this is a two and a half year old uh, follow up now again the two things remain constant the premolar tooth bud is uh, growing nicely the lesion remains to be uh, healed the tooth is going very strong but uh, now uh, there is almost a complete resorption of uh, uh, metapex uh, <coughs> from uh, within the canal there is hardly any metapex that you can see the layer of uh, uh, zinc oxide eugenol on the pulpal floor uh, remains to be intact uh, over <coughs> just above the metapex <coughs> this is a uh, excuse me this is a three and a half year old uh, follow up of uh, the same case so again as we are saying now there is no uh, material which is being seen inside the canal uh, it, it looks like as good as we have not done a root canal therapy for uh, you know uh, this particular case or it might have just been treated with a with a pulpotomy but once we go back to the pre operative x ray we could see the difference between uh, what has happened so the metapex has uh, resolved completely within the canal and the lesion is also healed uh, completely so this was after three and a half year old uh, follow up so just to compare between the pre operative and the current uh, situation is uh, uh, this there is a lot of difference between uh, both the x rays as you can see i have been fortunate to have a one, another year follow up with this case so now the child uh, this is almost a 54 months uh, follow up so uh, approximately four and a half years uh, follow up the age of the child is now uh, 10 years so as you can see this this uh, this is from where i uh, started and uh, now the child is around uh, 10 years of age with uh, uh, with a beautifully grown uh, second premolar the tooth the lesion is completely uh, healed and there is no clinical or radiographic uh, 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 symptom or uh, any issue with this particular Tooth. So this was the tooth number eight uh, five. This was the lower right uh, second uh, uh, molar. So uh, in in the duration when I was following up this case, so he he had complaint of uh, pain and swelling with uh, uh, the 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 other side uh, second uh, uh, primary molar, which was tooth number seven five, which was similar looking. Uh, uh, I think that time the child was six and a half year uh, old. so i had taken the x ray at that time and again i could see a similar kind of a lesion a similar furcal lesion a periapical lesion and there was no visible uh, uh, prime uh, second prime uh, premolar uh, tooth bud over here so this was when the child was 6 and a half year old uh, if you remember the other side uh, tooth which i had treated the child was 5 and a half year old when i had started the the pulpectomy and i could see the premolar tooth bud at Six and a half years, but for this child, I am still not able. To, for, but for this, uh, the other side, I am not able to see the tooth. But again, at six and a half years of uh, age, uh, I did the same uh, protocol. There was a two visit uh, uh, pulpectomy treatment uh, with intracanal medicament uh, placed <coughs> for uh, two weeks, and uh, this is the immediate uh, post-operative X-ray. Again, you can see a very thin uh, pulpal floor. this is the immediate post operative x ray the child is 6 and a half years old uh, at uh, this particular point of time uh, and there is no uh, signs of uh, premolar tooth bud which is uh, being seen fortunately i was able to have a follow up with this case and uh, as you can see this is just a 6 month follow up of uh, this particular case uh, wherein uh, you can see the, uh, the 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 premolar tooth bud is you know starting to uh, grow and starting to appear now uh, Uh, the lesion has healed uh, completely which is again co co uh, keeping constant with uh, the other side uh, uh, second pro primary molar uh, the the metapex which which had gone beyond the apex and uh, into the furcation area has also he uh, resolved uh, completely uh, and as uh, predictable and as uh, expected after one and a half years again uh, we could see that the the metapex from within the canal is also slowly and steadily started to uh, resolve which is a normal phenomenon for uh, uh, these cases the premolar tooth bud is uh, growing uh, uh, nicely it's growing slowly and uh, steady so this is a one and a half year old uh, follow up with this uh, particular case a two and a half year old uh, follow up of this same case as you can see a lot of difference between the the, the pre op situation and uh, a two and a half year old uh, follow up wherein you can see the metapex is uh, starting to resolve the lesion has uh, healed completely so what what uh, difference i have been uh, seeing and you know what uh, since we we have uh, followed the the, the small uh, concept of placing a, a hard setting zinc oxide uh, eugenol uh, layer of 2 uh, uh, mid 2 to 3 mm just above the obturating uh, material Uh, just to make sure that uh, there is a proper seal uh, uh, in that area which which is more prone to uh, getting uh, reinfected in uh, 
such cases because our obturation may not be perfect uh, all the time we may not have a proper three dimensional uh, a well sealed uh, metapex obturation inside the canals in every uh, particular case but what best we can do is that we can preserve the pulpal area the thin the pulpal area where there are a lot of accessory uh, canals which could lead to uh, bacterial uh, transgression and which could lead to a reinfection so it is very important to preserve that particular area so coming back to the case uh, this was the second lower left uh, second primary molar two and a half year old uh, follow up as you can appreciate the difference in the pre op and the post operative uh, situation this is a three and a half year old uh, follow up uh, again uh, no 42 months follow up wherein you can see a nicely growing second uh, premolar and uh, the clinical and radiographic uh, Uh, radiographically there is no uh, uh, no symptoms or uh, uh, no signs of failure which are observed the child is uh, 10 years old so follow up radiograph in both the cases i have showed a beautiful furcal uh, healing which 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 will which will happen uh, and uh, the appearance of both the premolar have also uh, erupted at the age of you know 6 and a half year old in uh, the lower right uh, Uh, second primary molar and the premolar had erupted uh, at the age of 7 uh, and a half year old in the in the lower left uh, uh, primary molar so this is the clinical uh, situation of uh, my particular uh, case uh, wherein uh, both clinically as you can see i have already shown the radiographic uh, appearance wherein uh, as you can see there is a beautiful healing there and clinically also both the uh, molar with the preformed zirconia crowns are doing uh, good over here Uh, just discussing two or three similar uh, cases, not in detail, just a similar kind of cases. Again, this this is one particular case with a, with a similar uh, uh, this thing. But the but uh, this particular girl was uh, uh, around four year old when I have started this uh, case. Uh, uh, again, a furcal and a periapical uh, uh, abscess in this uh, particular case. Uh, I had obturated with uh, Vitapex in this particular case, and uh, within just within six months, a beautiful healing has uh, taken place. Uh, i'm sorry i could not post a two year uh, follow up of uh, this particular case i just saw the child uh, yesterday uh, the premolar there is no signs of the premolar tooth but uh, growing in this particular case the tooth is uh, still doing uh, perfectly fine the lesion has been healed the material from inside the canal the metapex uh, the vitapex i have used in this case has also uh, excuse me has uh, uh, resolved but there is still no signs of uh, the tooth but the, the girl is already 6 and a half year uh, old and i'm going to keep uh, this particular case under continuous follow up so, uh, similar case but with, uh, not a congenitally missing uh, premolar case but just to show you that even furcal radiolucency and uh, these kind of similar uh, cases with uh, uh, huge abscess and uh, mobility uh, uh, ha have been showing a good uh, healing so this is just a one year follow up and you can appreciate a very nice healing that has uh, taken place Uh, one could always consider extraction and uh, space maintainer as a very predictable uh, outcome with these particular uh, cases but i'm just going to share a very recent uh, literature as well so again this is one particular case uh, wherein uh, uh, I, i was able to get a very good uh, 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 healing as well in this case because this this was a case with a huge furcation uh, radiolucency and uh, one could have easily thought to extract and uh, place a space maintainer in this particular case as a predictable outcome but all the options were discussed with the parents and uh, we 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 followed the same uh, uh, pr protocol a two visit uh, pulpectomy and uh, we we can see a very good uh, healing in this particular case we have obturated this case with uh, vitapex and there is a preformed zirconia crown with this first primary uh, molar so the 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 point that i wanted to uh, make is that as you can see clearly in this picture also this is a 2 year old uh, follow up of uh, a routine uh, pulpectomy case and uh, as you can see after 2 years the entire uh, uh, obturating material has uh, resolved which happens in uh, some of the cases i i will not say it happens in all the cases but you can see that the layer of the hard setting zinc oxide you know that uh, i have placed is going to remain uh, intact and it's going to act as a barrier and preserve any uh, communication between the pulpal and the periodontal uh, uh, region so this is just to show that the everything has got resolved but uh, the zinc oxide which we, which we had placed is uh, still there or uh, you can also use a mta which which was shown in the study to give a slightly better result as compared to uh, zinc oxide uh, eugenol um so these uh, cases with uh, uh, so the, particularly these are non vital uh, uh, cases so this all so all these uh, ca cases with uh, the protocol that uh, we have uh, discussed 
and uh, uh, recently last year there was this uh, systematic review that was uh, published which uh, uh, which has give, given a good uh, success rate for uh, non vital uh, uh, cases so the 18 month success rate uh, was uh, seen to be uh, good enough uh, so they have found that uh, the oxidating with zinc oxide endoflus is slightly better as compared to uh, uh, they have got a, a better success rate as compared to oxidating with uh, calcium hydroxide iodoform based uh, material Uh, calcium hydroxide iodoform based material have given a variable uh, success rate we have got very nice uh, literature the success rate of these materials uh, could be as low as uh, around you know 50 to 56 or 60 percent uh, uh, some articles have suggested and some articles have given 100 percent uh, the success rate obturating with uh, uh, metapex and uh, vitapex so this is just to uh, show you that a non vital uh, pulp therapy uh, done in a proper uh, um, protocol is also going going to give you a very good uh, success rate uh, so towards the end uh, this unusual case uh, case uh, shows that the pedodontist uh, clinical decision should be uh, flexible enough because unexpected situations can always uh, arise especially when uh, treating growing patient because we are not very sure when this particular tooth uh, over retained primary molar is going to uh, resolve <coughs> the clinician should also be uh, aware however of the possibility of a delayed development of uh, uh, premolar uh, as it has uh, happened in uh, this particular case as you can see one side the tooth uh, developed at 6 and 1/2 year age and the other side it developed at 7 and 1/2 years of uh, age so there are several reports in the uh, literature of uh, an apparent initial lack of uh, radiographic evidence of developing premolar but at the age of 8 years 10 years or even 13 years they they have uh, seen subsequent uh, uh, radiograph that it has revealed the development of uh, these uh, tooth which we were, were diagnosed as uh, congenitally missing so just showing you one uh, case report wherein this was a particular child where, where they have they have planned for an orthodontic uh, treatment it is published in the korean journal of orthodontics where at the age of 8 years as you can see uh, that there is no uh, uh, pre premolar which is uh, present a second uh, premolar and at the age of 9 and 1/2 year old follow up radiograph as you can see the premolar tooth bud is uh, visible right and this is a uh, x-ray when the child was uh, 10 years old so the the premolar as you can see at the age of 9 and 1/2 year old also it has started to uh, uh, develop at that particular age so again a lot of uh, articles you know uh, are there which so we have to be aware that uh, we should there should not not be a misdiagnosis of a congenitally missing uh, second uh, uh premolar for uh, these kind of uh, cases so a delayed calcification of uh, mandibular premolar can always uh, occur so we have to always be uh, flexible enough with our uh, treatment uh, um, protocol so um, so always decide what is the age of the child uh, what choice of obturation material that we have to use as i have told about uh, what could be a, a preferred uh, material for for these kind of cases also we have to determine what is the prognosis of the tooth what could be best for the child whether extracting and placing a space maintainer is best for the child or uh, saving the tooth which would act as a natural uh, space maintainer is best uh, for the child and one thing which i would uh, like to stress upon is regular follow up so follow up is always uh, essential and not only for these kind of cases but even Uh, other routine cases as well because every case is going to teach us uh, something or uh, other when we are looking at the follow up so in our practice we have a very strict protocol of maintaining follow up for each and every uh, cases even if it is a uh, routine cases uh, unlike these uh, special cases as well so just to conclude as we speak on the emerging trends in uh, pediatric dentistry Uh, we realize that the goal of saving a primary tooth is uh, not only for it to act as a natural space maintainer but as in the, uh, seen in this case it could also uh, provide a healthy and a favorable environment for the growth and development of uh, the underlying uh, permanent tooth uh, but uh, uh, th- thank you uh, each and every one thanks a lot uh, muthu sir and uh, the entire the pediatric department of uh, sri ramachandra university for uh, giving me this uh, opportunity to share my uh, experience with uh, you all thanks a lot thank you everyone thank you um, thank you dr milin and uh, dr vignesh uh, uh, you can take the questions and i will uh, come uh, once the questions for some participants of our meeting i'll come back again uh, before you finish the questions uh yes sir uh thank you sir uh thank you thank thanks you. for the wonderful lecture and uh, thanks for follow ups what i've seen
and first uh, i have even i have a few questions to her i'll come at the last after the pgs and the participants uh pgs if you want to ask questions please uh, one by one you can ask the questions so sir uh, sir i have uh, one question this sir so is it like the delay can be possibly due to the caries of that uh, primary molars can that could have caused the delay in development of the yeah so the very uh, very nice uh, uh, question that you have asked uh, the, the, personally i feel that in this particular case there was a huge uh, abscess a huge furcation radiolucency possibly a granuloma there which could have prevented the growth of uh, the premolar although there is no literature uh, 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 citing what I am uh, speaking, but uh, what possibly what I could uh, uh, predict in this particular case is exactly what uh, you told that that there could be because of the infection the premolar tooth bud could not uh, grow. But once we treated the tooth and uh, you know we uh, we relieved the tooth of the abscess by doing a pulpectomy, then probably the premolar could have uh, uh, got a, a favorable environment to uh, grow and uh, uh, it developed uh, further. Could be uh, uh, one of the uh, reason. Uh, nice question. Yes. Yeah. Mm. So, uh, just I just have two questions, sir. Yeah. So the first is that, uh, so suppose there is no permanent uh, premolar tooth bud, and uh, as uh, seen if I. Uh, hello. I could not. Yeah. Uh, so suppose there is uh, there is no permanent. Permanent tooth, a uh, premolar tooth bud, sir. Even after obturation, and the obturating material has resolved. So, do we have to re-enter and uh, re uh, 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 refill even if if, if it is, there are no symptoms? But do we have to do a re-obturation, sir? No, no, no. See, as uh, uh, you you see in the follow-up of uh, my hmm. case, also uh, the the entire obturating obturation material had got uh, resolved. What is important in uh, in while obturating a primary and in in this these uh, cases. Or unlike whenever there is no congenital premolar, even there is a congenital, uh, uh, even there is a premolar which is present there. What is more important is the coronal scene. We are placing okay, a sir. crown, and the coronal scene is uh, perfect. Plus, in these cases, these kind of cases, I always, uh, as I discuss, I place a layer of uh, uh, hard setting material, yes, like sir. Or MT. So even if the obturation material is resolved completely, there is no need to uh, re-enter and uh, go back uh, again. As far as our coronal seal is uh, maintained intact. Okay, uh, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. So, so and uh, one more question, sir. So, uh, according to the article that you had shown, sir, by Paul et al., he had stated that the number of visits do not uh, do uh, has not related to the success of root canal treatment in the non-vital pulp therapy. Right. So, can we do a single sitting a non uh, treatment for a non-vital teeth, sir, or? Yes, yes. So there is again a uh, there there is again a very good uh, uh, article. Uh, maybe not by call, but I could see that they have compared single visit and uh, multi visit uh, pulp therapy, and they have given uh, they they have shown that there is no statistical difference between uh, you know, both these uh, these things. In our practice, also wherever there is a small abscess, there is uh, there is just a gingival uh, which is uh, present. We do single setting uh, pulp therapy as well. But when we we find cases with a very huge uh, furcal radiolucency, the patient presenting with an extra oral swelling or uh, these kind of huge uh, lesions, we prefer to uh, do a two visit uh, pulpectomy. But uh, as you said, single visit pulpectomy is also give you a good uh, result as literature uh, says, and we ourselves do it for smaller uh, lesions in our practice. Okay, sir. Yes. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good morning, sir. Good morning. Uh, sir, I have a question. Uh, whether we have to ask any history of systemic disease or medically compromised condition, which is which which can be a reason for uh, delay in odontogenesis, sir? Could be, could be. In our case, there was no uh, medical history, but uh, as you said in literature, there are a lot of uh, there, there could be some uh, vitamin deficiency or some other uh, syndromic uh, 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 involvement which could lead to. Uh, Uh, oligodontia or uh, partial agenesis so so that could be one of the reason but uh, my uh, this particular case that i have presented there was no medical uh, history but taking a good medical history again is a very uh, important thing and it could uh, let to change in our treatment uh, protocol so that that could be uh, some systemic uh, disorders as well which could lead to uh, congenitally missing uh, premolars okay sir yes thank you sir thank you
good morning sir yes. sir uh, uh, in case of the child is at 11 years of age and there is no presence of uh, tooth bud sir so what would be the ideal choice to proceed with sir oh chalwalk chalu chalu sorry uh, can you hear me yes sir yeah can you just uh, uh, come again so if there is uh, you told that the patient is 11 year old and there is no uh, uh, premolar tooth bud right yes sir Uh, so, like, is it uh, carious, and uh, we have to do a pulpectomy for that? Yes. Case? Yes, right. Uh, so again, like uh, as I uh, said, you know, at, again uh, uh, at eleven years of age, it is uh, very, uh, it is safe to uh, obturate with uh, uh, the routine materials that we uh, do it for our uh, primary molar, could be zinc oxide, eugenol, endoflas, or uh, this thing. Once the patient has crossed fourteen uh, uh, years uh, of age, uh, or Uh, after that then we could uh, think of obturating it with uh, gutta percha or uh, mta as in literature also we have seen that there is a possibility of the premolar tooth bud growing at uh, 11 years or even 13 years of uh, age so always uh, safe to obturate with uh, uh, this our routine uh, primary obturating uh, materials because we never know how the uh, tooth is going to behave in a very unpredictable uh, manner as the case report i presented just within 6 months the entire root of the primary tooth got uh, resolved so could be various uh, reasons okay so thank you sir uh any questions from first year pgs uh, no sir so any other questions from the participants Uh, if none, Vignesh, can I? I just uh, say a couple of uh, lines, and then we can uh, give the certificate. And okay, if you have any questions, you can take over after that. Is it okay, Vignesh? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, thank you, Dr. Milan. Actually, it's uh, really good, uh, fantastic follow-up. Uh, so I, I, I'm a little more hopeful now. If you see a congenitally missing. Uh, uh premolar so you can go up to even uh, i've seen now based on what you have shown uh we never see we as a clinician you do see these cases in the practice as well and our always our intent is to save the primary molar right that's the way we work on but i yes, never pay too much attention to the uh with the uh, develop we i had some experience probably i have to go back and Look at the uh, cases that we have treated. What yeah. we consider as congenitally missing at five or six years, and uh, the learning today is uh, probably it can still come back at a later date. You know, yeah. five six years, and yes, still do uh, but can emerge uh, later on. And uh, yes. the norm, as you said, is uh, it usually it appears by three, three and a half, four years itself, right? That's yes, sir. The literature you showed in the beginning of your presentation. Right. So that's a good piece of for me to, as a clinician, to keep in the back of my mind. Okay, so there can be still hope, uh, even if at six years of age you you have a, a, a developing premolar missing. Yes, sir. Can still reemerge. So that is a, a brilliant uh, documentation. I think you should even go and document in a. Uh, I need to say paper uh, good write a good paper on it and uh, I need to his case series or something like that I need and, to uh, say okay so it's wonderful uh, I need to good radiographs good pulpectomy and good clinical tips towards uh, pulpectomy as well thanks a lot sir thank you very much uh, thank thanks, you for sir. sharing your uh, knowledge with us and and I appreciate your time as well and, thanks a lot for giving me this opportunity sir sooner or later I think we will meet in definitely sir definitely we we look looking forward to meet you again sir thanks a lot for this uh, wonderful opportunity where i could share thanks a lot sir thank you very much thank you thank you so over to vignesh uh, yes sir so one question from parsman ma'am yes. from a faculty yes sir uh, dr priya ma'am she has asked whether the permanent tooth bud of first premolar was normal in the both the cases you had shown in the presentation Uh, radiographic so uh, uh, radiographically yeah radiographically the both the premolars are uh, looking uh, fine so the the, the tooth is still under uh, follow up and uh, the child is already uh, uh, 10 years of age so probably within a uh, couple of years i, I could uh, 
uh, it, we be able to have a clinical uh, follow up of the premolar as well but as far as uh, till now if it is concerned the premolar is looking uh, normal in the radiographs both the premolars okay sir thank you sir and from my side uh, if i had seen a case congenitally missing uh, premolar for a 6 or 7 year old patient i would have definitely obstructed most of the cases i had obstructed with uh, zinc oxide now so now we are shown to how to uh, can we use a uh, metapex or vitapex also was yes. one important thing and the next important thing what i had missed in my uh, clinical practices we usually restore with the cavg that's a temporary yes. filling material or gac yes. directly we thought yes. uh, giving a place of uh, zinc oxide all and yes. then followed by the gac right. uh, so, so now we know the in that particular article which i have uh, was, uh, shown so that there they have a uh, uh, Placed a layer of this thing, and on top of it, they have placed a uh, GIC. So it was either they have compared with uh, um, uh, placing a base material using it MTA or uh, a material similar to a uh, cavity which IRM, which is a reinforced uh, zinc oxide original. But on top of it, they have placed uh, GIC only as a post obturation uh, uh, restorative material. And they have a beautiful follow up of 18 uh, months in that uh, study. So it's a good article. Yes. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, uh, one more thing. Uh, do, do you want to use any uh, intracanal irrigant specifically, or any specific needles like uh, needles like thirty or something, or uh, similarly, uh, or do you use any similar uh, any uh, clinical kind of irrigant? We we, we can use a uh, side vent uh, needles. Yeah, uh, uh, we have the, the needles by uh, Prime Dent. Uh, generally, uh, nice and cost-effective uh, needles. so we can use by any uh, company so th- these are particular because our aim is to uh, we have to prevent the material from going beyond the you know uh, the hypochlorite material yes. generally should not go or we should not forcefully uh, inject it so these side vent needles are always uh, uh, safer uh, uh, in terms of preventing the permanent tooth bud by any uh, with any uh, problem in future Yes, sir. And uh, any dilution has to be diluted. The hypo, the five percent or two point five percent. No, no, two point five percent concentrated hypochlorite. But as I said, I do not uh, inject forcefully. I I may just place place it on the you know on the floor and agitate it with the help of uh, K files. I will never go deep okay. inside the canals and uh, try to uh, ir- irrigate it. Uh, intermittently okay. saline and towards the end a two percent chlorhexidine uh, solution. But I never deep inside the canal, and uh, I will not dilute it direct, directly with uh, 2.5 uh, percent. For so non uh, rubber dam uses or for the beginners, suppose right. they want to use a hypo, then it's uh, not a safe uh, to use uh, without a rubber dam. Right, right, not a safe, not a safe thing to uh, use without a rubber dam. Um, uh, Dr. Stephen Cohen has uh, I have uh, said once that uh, you know uh, he uh, uh, prefer to use chlorhexidine only as a uh, obturate, obturating material, so irrigant, irrigant uh, intracanal irrigant. So probably for those uh, uh, initial days, you know, so, uh, uh, postgraduates who are not using rubber dam, maybe uh, starting with the uh, uh, chlorhexidine uh, uh, irrigation could be a uh, safer, but not sodium hypochlorite when there is no rubber dam. Okay, yes, sir. fine yes sir thank you so much for the lecture sir if any queries if i receive through the feedback i d- just post the feedback form link and yes, i have been receiving yes. the feedback form uh, the responses once it has been received i'll just post uh, by tomorrow it will be sent to you sir the feedback summary of all the bars sure. if any questions have been asked i'll just coordinate through the mail and then i'll just reply back to the mail and uh, yeah i'll yes. just press yes. the search bit of appreciation to you now uh, during the session sir and the hard yeah. copy will be received uh, tomorrow i'll just uh, send as a courier the hard copy yeah okay so this my screen is visible to you sir yeah yes 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 thanks a lot thanks a lot for this appreciation yes, thank you thank very much thank you sir thank you thank very you very much, much uh, for your time and thank effort thanks a lot with up It traveled you for the study trial and also, but still uh, some people no, 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 start no, up. Yes, yes, yes. No, that is always better to uh, have and uh, uh, very nice coordination and uh, uh, very uh, you know. Uh, thanks a lot. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Thank Vinesh. You, yeah. Thank you, Dr. Melan. Thank you, Mr. Thank, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank all, you all the partners. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. Have a good day. Thank you. Have a good day. Thanks a lot.